Guntram, in your latest policy paper, you argue that a banking crisis doesn't come without fiscal consequences. Yes, I think one important lesson, and we discussed the results from, from banking crisis in the history, is that banking crisis, significant banking crisis, always come with uh, fiscal costs. And these fiscal costs can be quite substantial. We know that in, uh, in, uh, they are often around 3, 4, 5 percent of GDP, but there are often instances also where fiscal costs amount to 10, 15 or more percent of GDP. So uh, I think it would be an illusion to think that you can prevent um, a banking crisis to amount to some fiscal costs. So we need to think about fiscal, uh, the fiscal backstop to, banking, uh, to the banking system. Uh, um, which is a crucial element uh, of, uh, of, of any bank resolution policy. Without it, it's uh, without a fiscal backstop, bank resolution is, is not really viable, so you, we, we need to tackle that problem. And what do you argue are the dangers of the sovereign feedback loop? Yes, I think one of the big fragilities that we see in the Eurozone is this negative feedback loop between uh, banking risk and sovereign risk. Now, the idea of the banking union is to essentially break that, that, uh, that loop uh, and prevent that fragility in the banking sector, problems in the banking sector, amount to significant sovereign uh, risk and ultimately to sovereign insolvencies. Now, the way to address th uh, th this is addressed at the moment is just by putting in place one element of, uh, of the banking union, which is the supervisory pillar. However, I think it is clear, given that we know that banking crises have fiscal costs, it's clear that we need to organize and agree on some mechanisms to organize a common fiscal backstop. Because only with a common fiscal backstop, you will be able to break the vicious circle between banks and sovereigns. And what would that common backstop look like? Well, in the paper we, uh, we are publishing, uh, we present several different options of how such a fiscal backstop could be organized. One option is uh, with, a pre uh, with a fund which is accumulated ex ante. That wouldn't be in place very early, very, very soon. Another option would be an ex ante agreement on burden sharing. We could also have the option of uh, modifying and extending the ESM. And finally, there's the option of uh, going for some degree of contingent taxation at a European level. Now, all of these four options have pros and cons. They are not all uh, uh, easily doable. There's uh, significant political obstacles to it. Uh, I think it is important that we start having this debate on how do we organize uh, a fiscal backstop to break the sovereign banking uh, feedback loop in the Eurozone and to be able and to be prepared for banking crisis in the Eurozone. Without that, um, stability in the Eurozone won't return and our paper discusses these different options.